Are you stuck in an endless cycle of confessing the same sin over and over again? You fall, you go to confession only to go right back and commit that very same sin again. Would you like to break that cycle? If so, then this is the video for you. But as always, first we start with our mission. With firm faith, I believe and profess everything that the Catholic Church teaches. But for many reasons, the fullness of that message hasn't been getting out lately. What if we, together, set out to learn the faith, to live the faith, and to share this faith, like missionaries of old? What would the world look like in a hundred years? I know exactly what you're going through. Exactly. I've been through this very same thing, confessing the same sin over and over again every week. It got to be so embarrassing that I would rotate confessors and, and disguise the sound of my voice so that they couldn't figure out who I was. Eventually, I started to wonder, what was the point? If I'm just going to keep sitting, then why should I even bother going to confession? Now, if that's you, then this is the video for you. And by the way, if it's sins of impurity that, that, that you are specifically struggling with, I'll speak in more in depth about that particular issue. But let me first begin with an analogy. And I'm going to make a lot of analogies in this video. That, that seems to annoy some of you, but they work. So, so deal with it. Imagine for me that you are on a great journey across a barren desert with limited supplies. But every so often, you come upon an oasis in this vast desert. And this oasis gives you the opportunity to get water and refresh and restock your supplies. And, and then you can head back out on your journey until you come upon the next oasis. Now, between these oasises, oasi, o oasis, whatever, the desert is really brutal. It's, it's hot. You run out of food. You run out of water. It's, it's, it's treacherous. And the next oasis is literally life-saving. Now, most of us, I think it's fair to say, will never have to make a journey across a barren desert. But if you're like me, sometimes when, when I'm just sitting in front of the TV watching a game, I get really hungry. I, I get really thirsty. Football can be exhausting. So I do what any of you would do. I go to the fridge, and then I order a pizza, and before long, we got a banquet spread out on the coffee table. Now, why does this happen when I'm not even doing anything? I'm not climbing a mountain. I'm not, I'm not swimming the English Channel. I'm, I'm not crossing the desert. I'm, I'm just, just sitting here. But humans need things like food and water and nourishment. Even when we're just sitting on the couch watching football, let alone crossing a barren desert. desert. Think about that. You need stuff, even if you're just sitting in front of the TV. You know, now, just the same in the spiritual life, you've got to be realistic. You're going to get hungry. You're going to get thirsty. You're going to get weak. If you don't seek out spiritual nourishment, you're going to fail. And then this constant failure somehow is the reason that you will use to logically justify not going to the sacraments, the, the very source of the nourishment, you say, what's the point of going to confession? I'm just going to do it again. But think of the guy in the desert. He, he's on the cusp of death. And just on the horizon, he sees palm trees and, and birds, and he, and he can hear the sound of rushing water. And he says, thank you, Lord. You've, you've provided everything, everything I need. No, <laughs> that's not what he says. He says, What's the point of going that way? I'm just going to get thirsty again. After a while of thinking this way, the next logical step is to stop going to Mass altogether because, hey, what's the point? If I'm in a state of mortal sin, I can't receive the sacrament. So what's the point? How does this make any sense? Don't you see that the normal spiritual hunger and thirst that you have is precisely the reason you keep running back into sin? You have spiritual needs an interior life. We're not materialists. We believe in the spiritual nature of the human soul. And just like your material body has needs, so too does your soul. So as we move forward in this video, I'm going to suggest that you go to the sacraments, you know, mass and confession more, not less. Now, back to the analogy of the desert. Wouldn't you have a much better chance of success if you could stop at an oasis every single day instead of just once a week or for some of you once a month or or others never because maybe you've completely given up so the first thing to break this cycle is to consider how significant is the nourishment that we receive each day at mass 
and then get online and make a list of all of the parishes, hospitals, schools, etc., that have mass or confession and are reasonably close to you, to your home, to work, and get yourself to the sacraments daily. Now, I'm going to interrupt myself here because as I make this video, we, we all have this craziness going on in the world. So I acknowledge that this is going to be a lot harder for some of you than for others, but, but I'm making this video to be helpful, not just now, but even after all of this ends, which hopefully it will be soon. And if nothing else, maybe the current situation will help all of us to appreciate the gift of the sacraments that, that perhaps we've overlooked and take, taken for granted for far too long. Hopefully when all of this is over, if it will ever be over, then we will all appreciate the sacraments so much more. But anyways, make a list of places that you can go on the way home from work or, or maybe if you woke up a little earlier than you'd like to. Now that, that's when I lose all the millennials because they like to stay up all night gaming. And, but again, I'm challenging you. If you're in a desert and the only chance you have of surviving the day is to turn off the video games and go to bed a little earlier so you can wake up a little early and go to mass, think of it like it's your only hope of getting water today. And, and yes, I mean, maybe parishes should have more times available. I, I know that's a, that's a legitimate gripe. But aside from calling up a priest and making an appointment for confession, you don't have a lot of control over that. Stay focused. Your mission is to survive the day, not to look for excuses to stay up late. And and yes, you're also probably going to have to tolerate some circumstances that are less than ideal because maybe the priest at that parish near your work is is not the best confessor. Or, Or maybe you would prefer going to the traditional parish downtown. But If that's not realistic, if it's too far from your job or whatever, you're going to have to just bite the bullet and be accommodating to the circumstances that God has placed you in. You need the sacraments. Guess what? Liberal liberal priests can distribute the sacraments too. I'm not telling you to be buddy-buddy with him. I'm not telling you to register at that parish. You're just popping in. So moving on with another analogy. This, This one will hopefully illustrate how we have adopted a very un-Catholic and secular view of the person, a very materialistic and utilitarian understanding of the person. We need to renew a Catholic understanding, a Thomistic understanding of why it is that I am struggling with the same sin over and over again. The secular world has no interest in confessing sins. For For the most part, they don't even acknowledge the reality of sin. So their pop psychology, self improvement, self help perspective is not equipped to break this cycle that we may get stuck in. So here, imagine it's New Year's Eve. Now, I, I came up with this this idea on New Year's Eve while eating cheese balls and or cheese cubes and sausage balls. Now, imagine it's New Year's Eve and I have a New Year's resolution because for the last year, I have overindulged in every sumptuous pleasure. I feasted at banquet after banquet on the coffee table. But now, for the new year, as it is customary, I am going on a diet. Now, I don't have an ounce of self-control because, as I've mentioned for the last year, I have fostered gluttony. As a matter of fact, I'm an expert. I'm a world champion at binge eating. I could quite possibly win an award. I don't just eat meals. I feast. I have a routine, a ritual. Everyone here tonight at this New Year's Eve gala has witnessed this very talent multiple times tonight while waiting for that magic ball to drop. And as soon as it does, that magic New Year's Eve ball will magically infuse me with all of the willpower and self-control that I need to finally, for the first time in my adult life, be skinny. But while we're waiting, we have a few minutes left. I, I'll just, I'll just have, just have a few more of these. It's, it's good stuff. Well, I mean, it's a party, so this doesn't really count. I'll start, I'll start tomorrow. Now, six weeks later, I. 
am a fat failure. Just, just in time for Valentine's Day too. My, my sweetie's gonna be so disappointed. But why am I a fat failure? Be, because I clearly did not have enough willpower, enough self-control to produce the desired effects out of thin air. If, if only I had a, had enough willpower. You know, maybe it's not even willpower. Maybe, maybe I'm just big boned. Now, this is a violin. It's my son's old student violin, which, which he used to use to take lessons. And now he's an incredible violinist. He, he has a real violin now. But anyways, I'm gonna use this violin to illustrate how ridiculous that modern utilitarian concept is and, and why you keep sinning even after you go to confession. So back to New Year's Eve. Imagine with me that my New Year's Eve resolution is not my weight, but instead, imagine with me that my New Year's resolution is to play the violin, which, by the way, I cannot, I never have, and I never will. I, I probably should have mentioned all that before. I can, I can play the guitar, but that's another video, but, but back to the violin. This is the year that I will, for the first time in my adult life, play the violin. But do you know what I sound like at 11.59? And then the magic ball drops. And at 12.01, guess what I sound like? If you can't keep these cheese cubes out of your mouth at 11.59, then you will not be able to keep them out of your mouth at 12.01 or 12.03 or January 3rd or February 14th or whatever. You can't do it because you have already conditioned, habituated yourself to gluttony. And you are really good at it. There, there's nothing about that magic ball or the intensity of your willpower to cause that to change. Yet, millions of people despite unlimited amounts of evidence, repeat this ritual each and every year. And, and then they call Christians superstitious. The reason my son is so good at the violin is because he practiced, he studied, he repeated, he habituated himself to the craft. When you walk out of that confessional, it's kind of like a New Year's resolution. You have this heartfelt desire to, to pursue sanctity. But if you have habituated yourself to vice, to sin, over and over and over again, if you have a regular routine, a ritual of committing sin, you have to break that habit. You have to form other habits. Catholics used to call this, back in the old days, virtue. My son became good at the violin through practice over time. I could lose weight by breaking routines and practicing healthy eating but slowly over time, habituating myself to a different order of life to avoid the near occasion of sin. Deep-rooted, habituated sin requires changing the order of your daily life. And what I'm talking about requires intensity. Think of John the Baptist in the desert calling people to repentance. He doesn't mean, well, do better or... Just, just try a little harder. He means literally turn your life around because the direction you're heading now leads to death. Break your worldly hedonistic rituals like, like looking at things you shouldn't be looking at and thinking things that you shouldn't be thinking and anticipating pleasures that, that are disordered. Stop nurturing sin in your heart. This is precisely why the Holy Rosary is so powerful because we're not simply praying, but we're turning our hearts and our thoughts to goodness and, and the truth and the beauty of the joyful mysteries and the sorrowful mysteries, the mysteries, the glorious mysteries, all of our Lord's life. But more on that later. I need to make a clear distinction here. From a materialistic worldview, the just try harder strategy makes, it makes a lot of sense. But at its heart, I think it's completely antithetical to Christian spirituality because it does not look like, it does not smell like, it does not resemble in any way what it is that we believe. I, I think it favors Pelagianism, the, the idea that I am capable of saving myself through my own actions, my, my own efforts, my own, my own victories. And that is a condemned heresy. 
as Christians, we understand that there's nothing I can do to save myself. I cannot dig myself out of a hole. I need the grace, the, the saving action of Christ. Even if there were some legitimacy to the, to the Pelagian point of view, to overcome habitual sin, you would theoretically at least need to be formed in the four cardinal virtues, and that seems to be highly unlikely if you are stuck in a continual cycle of nurturing vice. Which brings me back to where we started, in the desert. If you need the life-giving water from the oasis, but you refuse to go to the oasis, or you only go occasionally to the oasis, while you are wholly incapable of practicing natural virtue at all, you have placed yourself in a hopeless situation, an endless cycle, endless, endless. Go to the sacraments every day. Go to confession, and when you walk out of that confessional, you are in a state of grace. At that moment, you are infinitely closer to the throne of God than you ever were while you were wandering out there in the desert. That's the reason why you go to the sacraments. That's the point. Even if by chance you leave confession and immediately fall back into sin, at that moment, you have approached the throne of God. And that is the point. The logic here, where I'm going with this, don't leave the church. After you leave the confessional, don't leave. At that moment, you are in a state of grace. Why would you hurry back out there in the world and put yourself back into danger? This, you're not ready, and this cycle continues endlessly because you are not equipped to go back into the world. But, but that's what you do each and every time. You confess your sins, and then you adopt a materialistic worldview, thinking this time you will have more willpower and more self-control than you did the last time. But where are you going to get that willpower from? This, this just looks Pelagian to me. When you leave that confessional, don't leave the church. Plant yourself down in front of the tabernacle and say all of the prayers that is proper and fitting for someone in this situation. And, and I'm going to go into detail here, but I need to make this clear. Don't miss this. Rewind this part over and over again until it's burned into your memory. How much grace do you theoretically need to break to be healed of this deadly cycle? Now, to be theologically accurate here, you can't quantify the grace of Christ because it's infinite. But you are not infinite. We can quantify you. If you live in a constant state of mortal sin, how much grace are you actually capable of receiving? Whatever that amount is, I think it's fair to say it's probably not a lot. It's probably not any. You can't because you're in a state of mortal sin. You, you can't receive the life of God within you when you are in mortal sin. So after confession, when you are now in the state of grace, it's a different story, an infinitely different story than it was before when you were in the treacherous and brutal desert. Now, after confession is the time to receive communion, to stay after mass and to, to pray the rosary with all the sweet little old ladies, to read scripture, to pray the stations, to attend adoration, these things I'm listing here, they're not just random. I'm not, I'm not just listing my favorite devotions. In these prayers, the church, be, because she knows that these are intrinsically good acts and spiritually efficacious, the church has granted in, indulgences for these particular prayers. Now, if you don't understand the theology behind indulgences, I'm, I'm not going to go into it here because it, it's a fairly complicated co uh, topic and really would require its own video to do it proper justice. But the priority right now is to break the cycle. So after confession, while you're in the state of grace, that is the time to approach the throne of God on your knees and beg him for the graces necessary to break this cycle. Ask him, this is important, ask him to infuse you with virtue so that when you leave the church, you are better equipped, you will have a fighting chance. Again, I want to repeat this because it's so important. If you are habituated to sin, you have routines, you have rituals, you have impulses, then the deck is stacked against you. And as long as you are playing the willpower self-control game, you will continue to lose. 
You don't have enough willpower. You don't have enough self-control. No one does. What you need is the supernatural grace that Christ won for you on the cross, and he gives that grace to you through your cooperation in the sacraments and through the spiritual life of the church, such as the rosary, adoration, and the stations. If you are stuck in a desert, you are equipped for failure. This is the oasis that you need, not only to survive, but to complete your journey. And if you only come to this oasis once a week, like every Sunday, do you think it's realistic that you are going to survive? Are you going to complete your journey? It's more likely that you're going to fail. And then when you're most discouraged and embarrassed, when you're that's when you're going to be tempted to stop trying altogether. You're going to think logically a very illogical statement. What's the point of going to the oasis? I'm just going to get thirsty again. No, it's time to get mad. Not mad at yourself for not having enough willpower. We're not materialists. It's time to get mad at our enemy who is pulling your strings like a puppet. Reorder your life. Go to bed early, wake up early, get to the sacraments every day, Develop your prayer life around the prayers of the church. Let me say that again. Around the prayers of the church, around indulgence devotions. And there are many more. I just named a few from memory. So look them up. Remember, you are not infinite. You are finite. There's a definite point. I don't know what that point is. But there is a point at which the grace of Christ will overcome and break this cycle. Whatever that point is, your job is to create in yourself through rosaries, adorations, stations, through the sacraments, by cooperating with the saving action of Christ, create in yourself the proper disposition to receive Christ's victorious grace. The question isn't whether or not it's possible to overcome this. Of course it's possible. The question is how long is it going to take you to form yourself to form in yourself the proper disposition to receive that sanctifying grace. Now, I mentioned at the the beginning that if this cycle of sin that you're stuck in, if that cycle relates to to sins of impurity, which most likely that's why many of you are watching this video, that's the particular sin that most often creates the circumstance. A while ago, I made another video on that topic, which dovetails perfectly with everything that I've spoken about here. It's not a short video. It's about 20 minutes, and and I know that this video has been longer than my normal videos. But these things that we're talking about are the things that I struggled with for a long time. And these two videos are how I finally, by the grace of God, overcame them. I'll link that, that video on the card at the end. But before you go, if this has been helpful for you, and you want to see more videos like this one, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Okay guys, we all struggle with it. It's embarrassing. But the truth of the matter is, we cannot advance in the interior life until we finally defeat this addiction. So today, we're gonna talk about just that. How do you finally break these chains?